right, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for that sneak preview you just had of the top left corner of your screen. We are getting into some draft phase right now. My name is Cameron Talker Castle, and I'm joined by Kevin Zuko Lamb. Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Cameron. Um, really looking forward to this game here, and I think that uh, we have an exciting matchup. Yeah, so today, Southern Virginia University is taking on Sawani University. Is that how you pronounce it, Kevin? I don't know. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sawani, Sawani, I think they're in Florida. Um, they, this is going to be a really close matchup. Um, all these ranks are, 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 are even across the board. Um, Sawani is using a sub, so um, they uh, – Swanee is using a sub. Um, they had to sub Righteous Blank in for, uh, for their mid laner, so their top laner is now going mid. Um, so that's uh, Sanji there going mid. He's got the Ari, and this draft is shaping up pretty nicely. Um, very tanky side here from SVU with the Braum. Uh, I think they stole that away from the, uh, for the Lucian. Um, that's a great combo, so SVU took that away, and uh, they got the two damage comp with the Syndra Sivir. Uh, Poppy very good into the Irelia. Struggles against the Nocturne, uh, especially in the 1v1s. He doesn't have any dashes, and he can pretty reliably hit that hit that uh, fear onto the Poppy and just take her down. So we'll see how this jungle matchup rounds out. Um, other than that, uh, this should be a good game one. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm definitely looking forward to some excellent Braum plays. Uh, you know, Honey T-Bone, Tyson himself, he said he was been practicing some Braum lately, and uh, we're really looking forward to seeing how he does on this. Um, we've got a really good, interesting comp here by Southern Virginia. You know, th like you said, the double damage, we got the Sivir and the Syndra, and then uh, to go with that, two tanks, and then Poppy, who's kind of just a hybrid of her own, really. So she can go hard damage or hard hard tank, either one, really, and, and she'll be viable. So Southern Virginia is lining up pretty nicely here uh and then over here with sawani they've got a, a pretty interesting really kind of a glass cannon almost looking comp so we'll see if they can capitalize on that and maybe get a good early game against southern virginia who knows yeah they have a lot of squishy members there the nocturne i don't know what build nocturne's going these days he might be going gore drinker since everyone goes it um but if he doesn't then he'll be relatively squishy and irelia you know she has a lot of health regen but uh, the side of SVU, that's a hard, you know, shield that they have built there with the Poppy, with the Mundo, with the Brahma. We saw this a couple weeks ago where they get this tanky lineup. The enemy doesn't really have a way to penetrate through the front line, and they can't get to the back line with no flankers here coming out from uh, Sawani. The Aurelia is the only real one that has that as an option, so she's going to have to look for TPs, look for odd angles. If her and the Nocturne can combo in the back line, that'll devastate the ranks of SVU. But if not, they have very little engage options outside of like a Nami, Nami Tidal Wave into a Nocturne just charging in with Aurelia. Kev, it's almost like Southern Virginia is learning from their experiences, right? Are they, like you said, in, in week one, they had a really good week where they picked a bunch of tanks and they completely watched the competition. So it's like they did some VOD review, maybe some excellent coaching there or something. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's most likely what uh, it was, I think, Cam. You know, uh, the coaching staff here at SVU is uh, doing their hardest, working with all these teams. Um, but, yes, yeah, so we do have a little bit of delay here. Uh, for all, all of you that have been watching us, you're used to this. Um, we do have a delay just to uh, keep uh, competitive integrity. Um, so we will be getting into the match shortly. Um, I'm interested to see what Swanee does. Um, their AD carry here, Yosenki, he is uh, one of their carries along with their mid laner, Sanji. Um, those two are going to be looking to take over this game. But it's it's funny because on the same side of SVU, Swammer and 5677 are also most likely the carries. And most often than not, they're the carries for the team. So this is really going to be a skill-based matchup in mid and bot lane. Um, with like minimal jungle interference, I feel like until level six where Nocturne can get his ult off. Right. And this mid lane looks very heavily technical, uh, with R Ari versus the Syndra here. So, um, five, six, seven, seven has shown that he's able to win these technical battles. And so I'm really looking forward to see how he does up against, uh, Sog, Sonneg. Is that how you say that? I'm not quite sure. I'm, I'm calling him Sanji. Sanji? Uh, Sanji sounds yeah, good it was, to me. Uh, you know, it's from a movie. There's a guy named Sanji, Mr. Sanji. You know, he didn't have to job. It's a whole big thing. Um, so I'm calling him Sanji. Uh, let's go with that. If he needs that to be corrected, I apologize. Um, but I am not an English. 
Saji, just let us know. Let us know <laughs> Saji, if you're watching. That's Saji. Saji. We're yeah, saying it wrong. Just let that, us know, man. We apologize. We, we do apologize. But yeah, like you did say, there's really not much for for a hard. I mean, they do have a quick engage with a nocturnal. But other than that, I mean, in terms of a team wide engage, uh, it's you're looking at a Nami tidal wave, and that's kind of it. You yeah, know, and that's other fairly than, easy to dodge. You have the Brom shield that can just stop the Nami. Idle wave in of it, like just completely. A quick disengage yeah. by SVU. So let's see if they can handle these team fights properly, and then uh, we'll definitely see who can take advantage of the early game here. Because, like I said, uh, Sawani, so they don't, they really need to take advantage of 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 this early game and of the fact that they have a squishy air comp and of the fact that they need to be able to get some early picks here. So we'll see if Southern Virginia can play a little bit more passive and and push this to end game where they can easily take this. Yeah, and and. From what we've seen out of the games here from SVU is if they can get through laning phase unscathed, once the team play starts, they kind of just are ahead of the game against most other teams. So we'll have to see if the laning phase goes decently um, for the side of SVU, um, and then hopefully they'll be able to get into the mid game and uh, use their teamwork that they're that, that that they're known for. Yeah, absolutely. So. Here we go. We got the game getting getting started here, and uh, we're just working about some a uh, few technical kinks here, cause uh, myself and and Kevin we're pretty new to this whole casting thing. Well, not so much to the casting, but actually working these computers. But uh, I think we're getting it figured out here, aren't we, Kevin? Dude, we're getting it figured out. Fantastic. I, I feel like Bill Gates over here doing everything. I'm a tech genius. We got a shoutcast. We got play the games. We got coach the games. We got everything going on here. Absolutely. And here we go. Swanee setting up with a pretty typical. Both teams setting up with a pretty typical uh, early game here. Just setting up, making sure nobody's going to do any type of invade. Looks like nobody's really interested in doing any type of invade here at all, right? Yeah, this is a sta as standard as it as it happens. This is the great wall here, both sides just playing the line of scrimmage. Um, nobody really wants to do anything level one. Very weak level ones on all sides. Brom, good level one, but SVU deciding not to really push that. Um, here's Sanji. This is you, you can tell he's he's feeling it. You know, Sanji, aggressive player from what I could see. Um, we'll have to see if he's able to get anything done with the Ari. A very good pick, but you have to hit the charms. Interesting little poke there, and then no nothing back from five six seven seven. Doesn't want to throw a Q back at him or anything. Just try to keep him at a distance. He's trying to get in his head here. You know, it's a co common mid lane strategy. You know, let him use his mana, get in his head. You got to activate that health regen. That's why you have the stack. So five six seven seven, trying to get in the head of Ari here, trying to get him get him overconfident on his skill shots uh, early on. Looks like Nocturne did throw a deep ward into the uh, red side jungle over there on SVU side. So, and Poppy answered with her with her own ward. So we'll see if uh, any anything happens with that jungle jungle up there in the red side. Yeah, and you have the pixel ward coming out from uh, Swanee as well. Um, haven't seen that as much recently. Kind of fallen out of favor uh, since last year, but they're electing to go for that. They are down a ward there. The, their support did throw that ward out, so they won't have a ward for bot side. Um, I don't think SVU is going to be playing towards that side. They might possibly uh, if Poppy wants to get uh, wants to get uh, some ganks going early, but we'll see how these lanes match up. Absolutely, and we're getting some good pokes here in the bot lane. This Sanji guy, though, he's definitely he's definitely pressuring this mid lane pretty hard against 5677, isn't he? Yeah, Ari's very good at shoving away, very good at harassing. 5677 eating the cues, but also letting it push, so we'll have to see if Poppy's able to loop around behind that Ari getting early gank off, but Ari definitely good at getting Pryo in mid, so the scuttle fights might be a 2v1 if 5677 can't equal out the push. And just like Swanee's taking advantage of that mid lane, uh, Pryo, um, SVU is taking advantage of the bot lane and really pushing these guys in with this Sivir wave clear, isn't he? Yeah, bot and top definitely going well for SVU on the push. They should be able to swing up for the scuttles. They're spawning in 30 seconds. Um, they're trying to just get that prio up so they can maybe try to get one or two scuttles from the Nocturne. It is relatively weak, the Nocturne, if you can see him coming. If he, if he cheats you from a bush, that fear is devastating uh, before he's level six. And here's something that I'm noticing now is uh, with both of these lanes that are pushing, SVU in the bot lane and Swanee in the mid lane, both these guys that are pushing are running low on mana. Yeah. Let's see if they're able to, to capitalize with maybe a jungle gank here soon. And this is what you'll see. Sanji has been harassing 5677, but he's losing the CS battle. And harass doesn't do anything unless you do something with that loss of health. I mean, he's down a potion. He has no mana. 5677 seven, just absorbing it. Misses his E there. That's not great by him. Uh, but he now is returning fire. Ari's going to have to get an early town off. She cannot contest the scuttle. 
that should be a scuttle going over to Poppy, and Pleasant Plant might be able to double scuttle this Nocturne. He has Pryo on the bot side. We'll see. It looks like Nocturne's already kind of rotating down that way, and then maybe he they could, since Cess views bot lane is pushed up pretty heavily right here, maybe when Nocturne can try to contest this scuttle and then push down, it looks like Poppy's looking for a gank mid laner here. Yeah, Poppy looping around the Ari here. Very hard angle, just trying to get some poke. Definitely going to have to town after that. And looking to contest this Nocturne. Will Brom swing up, make this a 3v1 situation on the Nocturne? Uh, Swanee trying to swing up as well. Nocturne, he's getting pinched off here. He knows he's going back up, but Syndra's up there. He's going to have to flash out of the pit. But is he able to get to the wall fast enough? And that's a good cue. And that's first blood over to 5 6 7 7. And just like you said, Kev, right there, you said that SVU was going to take a double scuttle. I don't even know why Nocturne thought he could get away with that. Yeah, he just completely did not understand that, you know, the Pryo was there on the bot side for SVU, and they just weren't ready for the rotation up. And uh, he wanted that scuttle bad. You hate to get double scuttled, but sometimes that's just how the chips fall. And, man, that was just such a good rotate by the Poppy there. Poppy was able to come down, contest this scuttle, communicated to his team that Nocturne was there, and everybody just kind of crashed in with an easy easy kill. And here's the bot lane from Swanee looking for a kill here. They did go two offensive summoners, so they're trying. But then a solo kill top lane by Willy Wonka, and that's a kill over to the Braum. Swanee falling apart in every lane. Honey T-Bone going hard. Can he get the Braum pass if he flashes for it? He wants to kill this Lucian so bad, but he's not going to be able to. They survived the pressure Boss like Poppy's here for the counter gank, and that's SVU up three to zero. Man, just so much action. We didn't even get to see what happened in the top lane there. And you saw the ignite going out. We thought the Sivir was gonna die there. And they were chasing hard. That name that Nami really wanted to kill the Sivir there. Yeah, yeah, when you see the Lucian take the exhaust, you got to know this guy is looking to pressure side waves later on in the game, look for 1v1s. This guy wants to get in there. He wants to fight. But he was unable to use his exhaust to proactively in that fight because the Sivir was so far away. You don't want to exhaust a Braum. So he's stuck now with, with a summoner that doesn't help. He couldn't heal the Nami. He couldn't keep the fight going, and they end up losing that 2v2. I mean, from the way it looks here, SVU is just taking a commanding lead here. We've got a solo kill top. We've got a great play bot lane to get a kill on us. And then here in the mid lane as well, uh, Syndra was the one that got the kill on the Nocturne there. So she's got a clear advantage of it against Ari. Yeah, and th so this is a huge, huge early game lead here for SV. Here's a 1v1 situation. Mundo tries to flash Aurelio, but he flashes too late. She gets the ult off and gets the solo kill return onto the Mundo. So top lane... Going even there, and Aurelia is up quite significantly on farm, so that is one chink in the armor here for SVU. I'll tell you what, I, that's going to be scary later on. This Aurelia is going to get really big unless SVU does something to stop her, because she is just farming like crazy right now, and getting that solo kill against the Mundo there was only good for her. Yeah, and here's a dragon coming out from the side of Swanee. SVU does not know that this is here. They're trading it for the fight here on the Aurelia, but unable to get the kill. So that's just going to be a dragon going over for free to Suwani. And you got to think that with the early game that SVU had, that's really unfortunate they're giving up that dragon. Yeah, Aurelia was able to get out of there with a, a quick dash to a flash there, and she was able to successfully get out from the poppy. So kind of SVU really didn't capitalize on anything by giving up that dragon. Honestly, I don't even think they knew that it was happening. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. And there's a flash forward. There's a kill over to Yosenki. Swammer does get killed there, and that's the Lucian flash used, but he does get the kill, and Sawani's picking up the pace now. This game is evening out. I'll tell you what, I did I did just say that SVU had taken a commanding lead, and uh, as soon as I said that, it seems like they've Swanee has gotten themselves right back into this match. Yeah, and, that, and here's, a, here's a fight coming out, 5677. He lands the E onto the Ari. He has the ultimate. Is he going to use it? Yes, but Ari lives with a sliver. So close there from 5677. If he went for the Ignite, he would have had her, but he has the Ghost. That'll help him later, but he's unable to get the kill, but he does have the pressure. Yeah, keeping both summoners alive there and only using an ultimate, making sure he's pushing this wave after the Ari gets out. I mean, as good as an engage as that was, 5677 played that perfectly in my eyes. Yeah, yeah, he played that well. Um... Ari didn't use her ult there, you elected to use the flash. Um, gotta feel like the ult was probably the better use there, as the cooldown's a lot shorter. Willy Wonka is getting into a bad situation up here. Mundo's not the best 1v1er until he gets tanky. He went for the Sheen early. That's good at small trades, but these longer fights, Aurelia's gonna have the advantage with the Conqueror stack up, with her passive. Um, so you gotta think that he should be able to just stall this out, but no, she's going in on him. That is the, the Mundo ult, though, so should be able to survive and get this farm under tower. 
Yeah, this Mundo setup here is, is is really interesting. I'm not sure if he bought the Sheen before he died or not, or if or what really happened here. But um, it's interesting to buy a Sheen after being down by an Are by an Aurelia who's as strong as she is with as much farm as she has, really. So we'll see if he can turn this around, build some defensive items, and and able to trade with her in lane. Yeah, I think he got a little overzealous there once he got that first kill. Um, but if he can just play weak side well enough, I think that he'll be relevant You know, later on in the game. That's what's great about Mundo, great about most tanks. Uh, we have Pleasant Plant here trying to set up a gank on the Lucian. They're trying to get a bait off here. But the Lucian already used his summoners, already got his play. Uh, probably not going to go for anything down here, so that's just kind of a, a wash. Yeah, you definitely got to be careful with that too. Braum was... Braum was showing a little bit too much aggression, maybe, I felt like, to, to lead off that there was a poppy nearby. And, and uh, Sawani was very smart and, and disengaged from that completely. So, and here's, good on them. Here's Nocturne getting the, the Herald. Um, he's uh, really going to probably use his ult and then drop the Herald. They need to start tracking this Nocturne better because they might have thought he was bot side there, but he was completely on the complete opposite side of the map. Now he's stealing away the chicken camp from Poppy. Um and his first ult, if that turns into an ult into a herald with multiple plates, that's going to be a huge swing of gold in favor of Swanee. And this is not a good face check here from Pleasant Plant. He is going to go down here. He's going to have to flash. He's not going to be able to. Here's the roam up from the Syndra, but there's the charm, and that's a kill going over to Swanee. Pleasant Plant had no right to be there. Absolutely, and I was locking, I was watching Aurelia the entire time. She rotated down, and then she just kind of hung out. She was looming over that area the entire time, and so it was interesting that Poppy was going to push out that far and really try to trade that, and then immediately died just because of Ari and Aurelia were able to crash down onto it. Yeah, and we're seeing we're seeing uh, uh, the top lane definitely going in the way of Swanee, mid lane going in the way of SVU. That was a kill though that got over to the Ari. That's gonna get the Ari rolling. Ari wants to get ahead early, wants to have enough burst to one shot these squishies. Um, we'll have to see if SVU does a better job planning out their rotations uh, because that was not a good kill to give over and just for a scuttle crap. SVU is definitely going to have to look at their warding too. The vision scores are relatively low. And not so much the vision scores specifically, but we're just looking at where the wards are and where the placements are. So uh, it's clear that Swanee has an advantage in the top lane with the Aurelia and the ability to roam. And she's definitely putting out wards, deep wards into their jungle. So we'll see if Swanee wants to invade on the red side jungle a lot at all. Yeah, they've had that blue pink there up by the red buff um, of SVU for a, for a little while there. Nocturne put it down when he did the chickens. Um, so hopefully SVU will be able to that out otherwise they need to get back to getting prio in their lanes and they need to set up maybe for this dragon maybe for the next scuttle um, play around pleasant plant really needs to find his focus find where he's going to play around and either get ready to counter the nocturne or uh, make a play himself interesting nami ult there like it almost seemed like she was trying to catch out silver oh, oh. five six seven seven going in on the ari ari still has has ignite he's it's the charm. Oh, that's a good flash out of 5677. And there's a Braum follow up. And Nami's there as well, but he's going to die as well unless he gets out with a flash. No, Braum, and that secures it. Two kills going over to SVU. That's a great bait from 5677. He used his flash early. You love to see it. I hate when people waste. They don't flash the charm, and that's what you got to do against Arya. You got to flash the charm. Here's Mundo, though. He's in a bad situation. Aurelia going in for the solo kill, but she's under tower. Can Mundo do anything? He's healing up with his ult. So he does survive. Flash used. Flash on Aurelia still up. That was a great example, too, in that bot lane fight of the tankiness, the sheer tankiness of a base Braum. Here's the 1v1, and no! Willy Wonka goes down again to the Irelia so close there. That is where it's just, you know, nail-bitingly close, and he just was not able to get the kill, and that's really going to throw him far behind. He does have the TP. He'll probably just be able to TP back up here, uh, but that's a kill you don't want to give over when you're on weak side. Hopefully with that death right there, Willy Wonka understands that he cannot 1v1 this Aurelia anymore. And maybe he'll wait a little bit longer for some jungle support. And maybe that jungle support will come and be able to turn that around. We'll be able to shut down, shut down this Aurelia here. Yeah, you really don't need to contest a wave unless it's frozen. Uh, you could just be patient there. Wait for the wave to kind of push up. Um, and then uh, farm, farm to your heart's content. But Syndra still has a huge lead. The Syndra is scary. Running low on mana. See if he's able to play smart because you do not want to give that shutdown over this early. Uh, we want to see the Syndra snowball. 
Yeah, just as this Aurelia is farming very well, she's on a kill streak. She's got, she's worth 200 gold for a shutdown. The Syndra is doing just as good, if not better. She's got better farm. She's farming up her tier. The Syndra is going to get really, oh, oh, oh. Sivir's getting caught out here, and then Poppy's trying to do some trades on the R. Oh, and that's a flash burn by Sivir. Does get out of that situation, but Braum was not in lane, and two ults down on the side of Swanee, but they do get the flash from Sivir there. So we'll see if SVU can go back in. Braum looking to get aggressive here on Lucian. Swammer just does not have enough health to survive. He does have his Kraken Slayer, so the, the, the items are the same down bot lane. Just come down to sheer play. They do have two combat summoners on the side of Swanee, though, with zero on the side of SVU. I have been noticing this Ari has been taking down so many plates. She's took down four plates off this mid turret, whereas Syndra has not taken off any plates. So it's going to be yeah. interesting here's here. Here's the first Nocturne of the game. It looks like it will be flashed out of it. And they're looking for the counter in fight. This could be huge for SVU. And that's a kill going over to Swammer. Can he get two? There's the exhaust finally being used. But there's the Braum stun. And that's why the Braum is so potent. That stun cannot be dodged. And that's two going over to SVU. But the return kill on the Poppy, that was a bad first ult from Nocturne. Huge play out of SVU. Such a good Braum stun. And then the ult, the three-man ult to turn that in, into SVU's favor there. I mean, that was just a perfect Braum play every way you saw it. Yeah, and you hate to see three kills on your Braum, but at the same time, you love to see at least kills going on your team. So he's going to be a tanky boy. He'll be able to make some plays. He'll be able to survive these fights a bit longer with the extra gold. And here's a kill possibility. Fourth, five, six, seven, seven, and yes, there it is. Five, six, seven goes to three and zero oh against Sisari. Such a good solo kill there, and you can tell that five six seven seven is really feeling himself. He's able to take the advantage of these one v ones. Oh, Willy Wonka getting caught out here. The one v one again. He got the flash, but then over pursued, got baited by getting the flash, and that was a bad flash on the side of Righteous Plank. But as but Willy Wonka fell for it, goes in and gets killed again. He, he's got to stop dying up there. And we had just spoke about that too. That Willy Wonka needs to understand that he cannot one v one this Aurelia anymore, even with all of his abilities up. So it's interesting that he's still taking these fights. He does have TP up, so maybe he can return to the top lane quickly here. Yeah, and here it looks like they're lane swapping that out, putting the putting the Siver up top against the Aurelia with the Brom. This is an interesting play. I haven't seen this out of our squad yet this season. Poppy going in for the kill here, going in for the one v one. Here's the TP out of Mundo coming to help. Are, do they have enough damage though? This is two tanks with a Nocturne coming in. Syndra is swinging from mid lane, but so is Ari. I don't know if Pleasant Plant's going to be able to get out. There's a Nocturne. Hey, Pleasant Plant at one HP. They get the kill, but here goes Mundo. He's going in. There's the Lucian's getting low. Syndra gets the kill, and that's two over to SVU, but the fight still continues. There's also a fight in top lane. Lucian goes down, but so does Irelia, and so does Ari. And Everything is going SVU's way, and this is looking like an ace over to SVU. They are dominating. Absolutely. To only lose one person there, and they got an ace, that was as clean as it gets, really. I couldn't believe my eyes. I couldn't see what was going on or who was killing who, but all I knew is that it was SVU coming out on top, kill after kill, and we have to see those plays again. I wish we had a replay set up because that was insanity at SVU. I'll tell you what. We'll talk to our uh, technician director here, and we'll get that squared away so we can get some replays up. But I'll tell you what. That poppy play, to only lose the poppy there, the way that she positioned herself to get herself back into the fight to bring SVU into that fight together so they could win that bot lane fight was phenomenal. I mean, I cannot overstate that enough. Yeah, and they really are pushing their advantage there. They knew they had all this gold on Syndra. They knew that the Willy Wonka was TPing in, and Swanee just didn't respect that. They thought that, oh, he's TPing in. He's been losing to Irelia. Yeah, you're not Irelia, Lucian. You're not Irelia, Nami. You guys get smacked by this guy. Irelia is the one that's fed, and if she's not at the fight, she's getting killed top lane in a 2v1. So they got to spread out they got to play to their advantages as you doing a great job at that and picking up this third dragon exactly and aurelia thought that she could keep fighting in lane over and over again until we put until svu put a sivir and a brahma up there and then all of a sudden that's not going to work out anymore huh yeah, and that was a huge big brain play out of the squad of SVU. You love to see those rotations. You love to see the lane swap. That's all in-game. Them just coming up with that idea and playing around it. And that is the kind of communication and the kind of, you know, strategy that you just love to see from your players. It looks like SVU was able to take that dragon, and they're rotating up to get yeah. this Rift Herald. It looked like it was going to be a trade, and Swanee was going to get this Rift Herald here. But yeah, but SVU wow. says no, and that's huge. You love to see it, but here comes the Aurelia, and she is the power point here for Swanee, as we've been talking about. So going back into the top lane, we'll see if he can uh, stop that snowball from snowballing any further. 
Just playing objectives there. SVU did a great job of getting that dragon and then immediately rotating up to the to the Rift Herald there to secure it. So uh, I don't know why Suwani only put two people on there. Uh, maybe they thought they had the damage, but it just didn't turn out that way. So it looks like we've got the Braum and the Sivir here in the mid lane and Mundo back in the top lane with the turret down. Yeah, I think they're trying to just... You know, when you're behind, you got to be as greedy as possible because they need to get experience. They need to get gold. You got two levels down on the Lucian from the Sivir. You got a level down in the support role, a level down in the mid lane role, and levels even in your top lane role, which is your advantage. So they, they need to spread out. They need to get the the waves. But at the same time, they need to group for the objective. So they're trying to cheat it out by sending two there, and it just doesn't pay off. Great shot calling out of the side of SVU. Pleasant Plant not letting his 0-3 scoreline deter him from being the face checker of the team and getting in there. That's great play by him. I'll tell you what, I just looked at that 0-3 scoreline too, and I was like, no way, po no way Poppy is 0-3 here. But it turns out he is, and that's okay, because Poppy is the one who's making the plays happen, and it's very obvious. Exactly. You love to see a guy who knows that, you know, he's putting his team in position to do well. He's not being selfish. He's not playing, hey, I got a farm because I'm behind. He knows his role and he's willing to put his life on the line for his teammates. You love to see it. And what I'm looking at here now, SVU's got some really deep pink wards, uh, or at least one deep pink ward. They got some pink set up. Uh, they got some good ward coverage here. They've got their mid lane or their bot lane sitting mid right now. Poppy coming out on the Syndra here. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, he goes, comes down, tries to tackle him into the wall, but unable to do so. Does get the ult out there from the Ari. Um, but if you feel like if you got that tackle, it would have been a kill. But either way, good gank there, good pressure. Sindra should be able to shove this in. And looks like a three stack of SVU players going up towards the Baron, just making sure shenanigans happening. No bush cheese coming out from the side of Swanee. Yeah, Poppy must have missed that stun by a sliver, I tell you what. So it looks like uh, Swanee is not interested in clearing these wards at all. They've pinged them. I watched them ping them, but they're not interested in clearing these pink wards out at all. And that's a great... Here's a collapse coming in from Poppy, and there's a tackle into the wall, and there goes Lucian. Great rotate from Pleasant Plant with the backup DPS coming in from Swammer, and that's a kill on the board with the Rift Herald being dropped in mid lane. Aurelia's here, used her TP. Mundo will not be here for a few, but neither will Ari. So this pressure from SVU might be good. They have to be careful about the Aurelia. She is pretty strong sitting on one item and a half, but Aurelia with one item is still scary. We'll see if they can get the charge off. I'm not sure if they'll be yeah, able to here get it in, but they're going hard. Rift. They really want to get this charge off, but they're unable to. The Rift Herald does die, but they do get a couple of spells there used, and it looks like SVU is going to have to back off. They might head towards the Baron, but that seems like a risky call. It does seem risky, but SVU's coming out of this really healthy, really healthy. That's such a successful push. I almost thought that they were going to get the second charge off on the Rift here. Oh, it looks like Sintra's backing. Maybe they're not interested in a Baron. Maybe they're faking this Baron. Who knows what's going to happen here? Yeah, I think cheesing this Baron could be huge. Um, Swanee doesn't have an easy way to check this. They're coming up as five. Here's the Irelia face checking, but Pleasant Plant's not the guy you want to be next to if you're Irelia. That's a great stun out of him. Unable to get anything done, and SVU's going to have to back off. That was a good try, a good cheese, but nothing results from it. Yeah, and SVU kind of taking advantage of the Inferno Drake uh, layout there and, and able to just kind of run right over that blue wall where the wall would normally be, right? And is able to collapse on that Aurelia there. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get the kill, though, so. Yeah, and speaking of dragons, we have one coming up here in less than a minute. 58 seconds, it looks like. Um, so we'll see. SVU looks like they're heading down that way, going to place their vision out. They do have a pink ward in the South River, but they have dedicated two north side. So see if they can get vision set up for this dragon. This dragon fight might be huge, or Swanee might just let SVU have it. Remember, it's four dragons till you have the soul. So if they get the third dragon, it's not that big of a deal. That soul is really the prized possession. I'll tell you what, that would be interesting if Swanee gives up this dragon here, though, because if somebody gets three dragons, they're going to be pushing for that soul, and they know they're going to prioritize that soul. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. This dragon is coming up. It's coming up relatively shortly here. So here we go. Yeah, this is going to be a huge fight. They do have the vision set up, and there's the Nocturne. He's trying to get in here. He might just go for a smite steal. Uh, that is going to be some gold over. you got to wonder, though, if Nocturne goes in and dies, that might just spell Baron for the side of SVU. So we'll have to see how they play this here, and it looks like Swanee's just going to give this up, unable to trade anything for it. That's going to be a third dragon over to SVU. Soul will be in five minutes. Stay tuned for that, folks.
We got Lucian and Nami hovering up over the Baron. Maybe the, maybe uh, Swanee's looking to make a Baron play here to respond to that dragon, but that doesn't just seem very intelligent at all. So we'll see if Swanee can can muster up some farm here. Ari's a farm up in the top lane here. She just looks a little overexposed. There's three people crashing down on it right now up next to this Baron pit right here. So they're just clearing vision, clearing wards. Everybody's kind of relaxing right now. Everybody's kind of doing a dance. Everybody's not, Nobody wants to make mistakes here. Exactly. That was a huge uh, pink ward put down by Pleasant Plant before that dragon. Um, and that really gave SVU peace of mind to know that they weren't doing the Baron, um, which was huge. So we'll see if SVU can do anything now. They have their setup. They have their 1-3-1 that they kind of want to go with. Syndra obviously is not great in a 1-3-1, especially with a Nocturne. Nocturne is a great equalizer in a 1-3-1. You may be able to 1v1 your opponent, but that Nocturne is going to be flying in from nowhere, and he can turn a 1v1 quickly into a 2v1. And if Pleasant Plant isn't predicting where he's going quick enough, he might just get some picks, and those picks could really swing this game back into Swanee's flavor, favor. So SVU's got to be diligent in their warding. They gotta be smart with their pushes. Speaking of a Nocturne, I've only seen one Nocturne ult this whole game. So I'm interested to see if he's really interested, if he's interested at all in ever getting any of these picks. I mean, we're doing a 1-3-1. SVU's doing a 1-3-1 one, three, one, here. It's easy to get picks, especially if Syndra's solo pushing a lane here. It looks like Nocturne is not really taking that advantage or has that aggression that a normal Nocturne player would have. Yeah, we see Nocturne invading wolves here. And yes, that's good. You you know, you're you're killing the wolf camp, but SVU starting up Baron, and they don't really care about their wolf camp because Poppy is already behind anyway. And keeping up in farm nonetheless. So SVU going for this Baron, but they don't have their Syndra. Syndra is in mid lane and backing off. So this is not a sneaky Baron. They know Swanee knows this is happening. Here comes Syndra, here comes Mundo. Will SVU stay on? This is a risky play out of the squad of SVU. Looks like they were just trying to feel it out, see what happened, and I don't think that that is going to turn into a Baron on either side. But here comes the Sivir ult. They might collapse on the Irelia. Looks like they're trying to just get desperately get for picks. This is a low engage squad out of SVU. They are very good at absorbing pressure, but not good at keeping it. So I think they're just going to play it safe till this next Dragon. That's a much safer fight. Absolutely. They had a 3v3 going on there at the Baron fight. The Cinder and the Mundo were collapsing in on it, and the Aurelia and the Nocturne were as well. Now we got a 5v5 looking like it's going to line up here. Looks like SVU might try to challenge this Baron again. We'll see what happens here. Swanee's clearing a bunch of wards. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, and here they go. Here comes the fight, and that's an engage. Come Nocturne trying to counter. He's flashing in. Cinder gets out of there, and they're all peeling for the Cinder. Look at this teamwork out of SVU. They are peeling back magically. They cannot be stopped. How are Lucian going to do any damage when SVU is playing like a unit like that. That was awesome to see. And here comes the counter engage. That's a huge stun out of Syndra. That goes Lucian. He's down. Here comes Irelia with a desperate defensive ult. You hate to see it if you're an Irelia main. That's last worst case scenario. And this should be barren for SVU. It looks like that Syndra E did two-thirds of Lucian's health bar right there. That was ridiculous damage coming out from this Syndra right now. Yeah, that was huge, and this should be the Baron going over the SVU. You, you got to love that they're playing to their comp, they're kiting back, they're absorbing that engage, and the Nocturne, just he just can't do it on his own. He needs the Irelia to go in with him, but they just can't get position. Great vision out from SVU, and this should be Baron, and then they might set up for Soul, and then that's going to be hard to come back from if you're Swanee. It almost seems like that waiting until 25 minutes to get your second Nocturnal was just a little bit too long. Uh, here we go. We got SVU picking up this Ari here. Ari's kind of caught out. She hits her Zhonyas. Oh, wow. Here it goes. Sivir is... Braum is able to secure that kill. And then SVU's... They're just going to get this Baron. They're going to back here. They had an excellent engage. Uh, we got the Ari down. They got the Nami down. Just this Swanee's getting caught out everywhere they go here. So let's look at SVU. They're going to try to get this soul. They're going to try to get vision up for this soul. They've got a Baron. They're going to push these waves out. Aurelia's backing here. And then Sawani's going to just try to make this make this comeback here. Let's see if they can make it happen. I mean, this is, this is a tough comeback. They're only 6k gold down, but they are a Baron down. And they are potentially going to be Dragon Soul down here as well. Here we have Braum and Sivir just rotating down here. SVU taking their time. We've still got a little bit of time here. They're just doing... Look at how much... Look at these vision scores alone here. Nami seems like they're the, she's the only one keeping Swanee in with the vision scores here. Uh, Mundo's getting some good pokes out here. Oh my gosh, look at how, loose, how low Lucian just went right there with those pokes. So... Poppy's just kind of zoning here. We're doing a little dance. She gets charmed, but that's okay. It doesn't take out any health. 
Clearing out some wards here. Mundo's just clearing the wards. Lucian is super squishy here, and it was exposed with those uh, pokes that that were coming out from Mundo here. Mundo with some good pokes here. Yeah, and here comes, oh, here the, comes the Nami ult. Yeah, and here comes the uh, Infernal Drag. Can they get this soul? They're trying to zone him off. Lucian desperately trying to open. <laughs> he just gets exploded by 5677. There's the smite coming in from Poppy. SVU looking dominant here in game one. They are up 6,000 gold, and they should be able to push mid here with the Baron buff. you got to feel like they can end it. I tell you what, I was just talking about how, oh, here comes Aurelia getting knocked out. She gets stunned with a Brom stun and stunned with a Poppy stun, and she gets taken out successfully by SVU. SVU is just pushing in with this Baron. They've got the Dragon Soul, and I was just talking about how squishy that Lucian was with every single poke that he was, and 5677 seven was able to take advantage of that and just kill him right over the wall. Yeah, SVU is just an unstoppable ball of death right here. I don't think they're going to be able to be stopped at all under any circumstance. They're going to shove in here with two dead on the side of Swanee. I don't think they're going to be a desperate... Nocturnal, but he just gets exploded by the Syndra, and that's Lucian dying to minions. Syndra is 8-0, and 5677 oh, seven has the game of his life, and that's game one over to SVU. Such a convincing win right there, Kevin. I'll tell you what, uh, SVU was very dominant with every single objective. SVU was very dominant with every single lane, uh, lane push there. The Syndra was 8-0. and oh. We had uh, our bot lane was 10-1. Uh, and one. I mean... In terms of what SVU did there, even though Poppy ended the match at 0-3, uh, the, the plays that he was setting up was phenomenal. I mean, the Poppy was just all over the place, setting up every single play that he could. So SVU takes that first victory handsomely. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is a best of three series. We will be standing by while the... Uh, while the teams go into pro draft to select and we'll see you for game two in just a moment.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Southern Virginia broadcast of this League of Legends match where Southern Virginia University is taking on Sowanee University. Uh, here we have SVU's gotten game one already, Kev. And uh, here we go into game two. We're looking at SVU's lineup. We've got a Dr. Mundo in the top lane. Uh, it's looking like a Zach Jungle, Yasuo mid lane, Lucian AD carry, and an Alistar support. Whereas Swanee's opted for a, I believe it's going to be a, a Riven top lane, Warwick Jungle, Wukong mid, and then a Zaya AD carry and a Brahm support. What do you think about that, Kevin? Yeah, so we, you know, both teams kind of, I guess they didn't want any AP in this game because we have uh, no mages. Oh, no AP assassins, no real ability power damage coming out. Maybe a little from Zach. Um, I know Pleasant Plant would tell me it's a lot from Zach, but only just a little. Um, and Sanji here going on the Wukong kind of saw that coming. He seemed comfortable in the mid lane on the Ari. Um, and as we mentioned before game one, he is a top lane player, but they had to make a substitution. Swanee did. So he got shifted to the mid lane um, and he. Now he's on one of his top lane picks in the mid lane. So he, I'm expecting a lot more out of him in this game, and this should be an exciting game too. It's going to be interesting because this Sanji guy, from what you've been saying earlier, was he's pretty dangerous. And now that he's on maybe a comfortable pick here with the Wukong, he's going to be able to win win lane comfortably and then able to do some some quick rotates to the top or the bottom to, to put some pressure on Southern Virginia here. Yeah, we have uh, him and, and Yosenki. They're very aggressive players. They look, they, they're going to be looking to push and push often and then rotate, like you said, for those team fights. And the style of this game is going to be explosive. I'm expecting some huge team fights. We have both teams want to go in. They want to get to the back line. Lucian and Zaya are going to be scared to death. They're the squishiest people in the game. Everyone else is going to be flying in like mad people, looking for kills, looking for engages. This will be very exciting. And I think laning phase is really going to see is going to win this game because whoever has more gold is going to basically be able to win the fight regardless of the engage because there's not much play around for either team. They both want to just charge in and bash heads. So whoever's head has more money wins. Exactly. And you said it perfect there. Everybody's just going to be bashing into each other. seems like Swanee's opted for more of a, a brawler style composition here with the Riven, the Wukong, and the Warwick, whereas SVU's taken more of a uh, a tankier side. So maybe in terms of scaling, I, I, I believe tanks outbeat the brawlers here. So it's interesting that... Um, that they've that they've opted for a you know ribbon Wukong Warwick whenever SVU has shown that they prefer tanks in the previous game they've shown that they prefer tanks in previous matches and here they are playing tanks as well as well as well and uh, we'll see what Swanee can do as an answer here. Yeah, I think that um, Warwick is going to have a stronger early game here against back. Warwick very potent early game jungler. Um, and scaling is going to be crazy because. On one side, you have Riven, Scaling, Wukong. Like you said, they're getting those booster items. They're becoming very good in the mid game. But then they kind of fall off late game once Yasuo has his items. He's just going to be doing more damage than them with similar survivability. Um, Lucian and Zaya, I think Zaya probably scales as stronger build paths than Lucian. Um, but you can never count Swammer out. This guy is a madman. He's able to make plays. He's able to get kills where other players wouldn't. Um, and this is just going to be a crazy game. I'm looking for those Honey T-Bone initiations. I'm looking for, you know, the Zack flying in, Pleasant Plant. He is a beast on the Zack with the Yasuo. Um, and Willy Wonka, guess what? He's on Dr. Mundo. I don't know if you've watched any of our streams, but he plays Dr. Mundo quite a bit. And this guy knows the ins and outs of that champion. He's going for the grass build. He's going to be an unkillable tank this game. Almost feel bad for Willy Wonka a little bit, you know, when a coach has to tell you you got to play Mundo every single game. It gets a little boring after a while, right? So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw or not, but it seemed like maybe Suwani let a little bit of nerves get to them there with the draft pick there because they 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 didn't like the Poppy from last game, so they banned her out. They didn't like the Syndra from last game, so they banned her out. And on top of that, they first picked the Braum. So three champions out of the five that SVU used for last game, uh, Suwani had to address here. So maybe they just didn't like how that game went. They didn't want to repeat a game one here uh, for game two. Too, or, or I'm not really sure what happened. It just seems like maybe nerves got a little bit to him there. Yeah, they definitely didn't. We're not expecting that poppy pick out of Pleasant Plant. And while his scoreline didn't show it, he was the catalyst for SVU, and he really worked well um, countering what Swanee wanted to do. They got that out of the way so they could run the Wukong, they could run the Riven, they could run these dash champions and not have to worry about it. 
Um, same word, same words coming out from both sides. Um, and like you said, Swanee chose to be on blue side for this match. So they are kind of running it back, but they took the Braum this time. Um, they did not like Honey T-Bone on that. Monster with it. And uh, we'll see if these adjustments make a difference here in game two. Absolutely. And then here we go with a very standard. Seems like nobody really is interested in invading at all. Here comes the minions. And we have very standard ward placement as well. So uh, I don't know if you guys remember from last game, the Sanji and 5677 seven, seven were poking at each other. At least Sanji wanted to poke at 5677 seven, seven, just like he's doing right here. Uh, it looks like 5677 is taking advantage of this. So it's interesting with the Yasuo. You can really get ahead with Yasuo or you can hit that 010 power spike that everybody is familiar with. So it looks like he's getting some favorable trades. Sanji's already having to run some pots here. And 5677 is able to pick up some farm, some easy farm here. Yeah, and this is Sanji. This is kind of his comfort zone, playing aggressive, going hard in the paint. This guy likes to get in your face, and he likes to play fast. He likes to not let you get farm for free. And now that he's on the Wukong, unlike the Ari, he's able to really pressure easier. Um, he can go in. He has those melee attacks. He can get out with the clone. He can pressure the Yasuo. And we'll have to see if that snowballs out of control because Yasuo really needs a few items to be relevant. Um, and if 5677 can weather the storm mid, he's going to be huge in these team fights. Absolutely. And it's interesting to see that Wukong's prioritizing as much poke as he is whenever Yasuo is winning these trades and he's also out farming Wukong here. So here we have the bot lane. Uh, Tyson, Honey T Bone's got to be careful here. He knows what Braum's capable of. He literally played him last game. And so he's got to be careful these Braum pokes here. Zach's rotating down to this bot lane. Let's see if they can get a good gank in here. Yeah, we'll see if Honey Tebow goes to the flash play here onto the Zaya. If she steps up too far, he'll go for it. And here comes Zach. There's the flash in the W back. Zaya's going to have her flash. She's going to have to burn it here. No, it's out flashless. That's a poor execution out of the SVU side. Flash blown top side by Willy Wonka. Will he be able to survive? He needs to run to his tower, and he does survive. So ganks on opposite sides of the map, both resulting in SVU flashes where none were blown on the side of Swanee. So they do have the advantage there. And there's the flash in. But heal used by Swammer and the knockback from Honey T-Bone. They have this huge wave. Swanee doesn't want to trade into it. So SVU being proactive, which I like, but they do summoners. Looks like both teams are being very safe here. Uh, Braum and Zaya able to get out of that gig gank that SVU had. Tyson had a great uh, knock up here with the Alistar. So uh, good on good on Swanee for able to get it, being able to get out of there. And then also on Willy Wonka up in the top lane, I mean, being able to dodge that gank by just using the flash. And then everybody kind of surviving. Everybody's just nobody wants to make any mistakes just yet. Yeah, and in the way these comps are, this is going to be a very snowbally game. Um, Unlike game one, where it was kind of close, kind of close, and then one team just eventually took over in the mid-game, this is going to be kind of dependent on laning phase. So whoever gets first blood, whoever gets the kills, that's going to be a weak spot for the enemy team and that they can just repeatedly exploit with the engage options from both teams. So no one wants to be that guy that's the weak point on their team. No one wants to give up that first kill, and it's going to be huge in this game. There comes Wukong coming in on the Asuo. 5677, look for the trades. The clone used. Able to get out. He does trade pretty good even there. Jungler's hovering around mid. They know this is action packed. Yeah, here comes Warwick rotating back up. Luno continues to push this top lane out, even though he's behind on farm by a considerable amount. It's interesting that he continues to do that. Hopefully he doesn't get caught up by this Warwick here. Hopefully Warwick doesn't want to take advantage of this. Zach's over here clearing chickens. Wukong's really heavily pushed up in this mid lane here. Yeah, it looks like Riven is freezing that top wave. Zach has to go up there to help Mundo out of that situation. Without his flash, he can't go up there safely, and he can't even really get a ward out. He knows Warwick's in the north side, and he doesn't want to give up that early kill because Riven can take advantage of him even more if she gets that early kill. So Zach needs to cover him. Well, so what do you do there, Kevin? I mean, does the Zach go and help the Mundo, or does he help snowball these other lanes so they can get a huge advantage? Yeah, so Zach has to go up there and break that freeze. And then once they break that freeze, Mundo can town. He can maybe get some pots. He can maybe come back to the wave. The wave will shove into him. It has to hit that tower. You can see it stuck there right outside tower. And um, he has to shove this in. Once it touches the tower, he can be fine. He can live a happy life. But until then, he's very scared up there, and he doesn't know where Absolutely. So we got the Inferno Drake up. Uh, SVU's doing a really good job of making sure there's wards and there's coverage up there. Um, we'll see. Well, how level this goes. six coming out from Wukong. Five six seven seven was not expecting it, and he's going to go down for first blood. That's the first blood going over to the Wukong here on Sanji. He gets the surprise level six on five six seven seven, and he gets the kill. 
Such a good turn there by the Wukong there. He was able to hit level 6 first, and then immediately turned as soon as he hit it. So Yasuo was not 6 yet. Yasuo did hit 6 as he died. Here comes Zach, like we said, up in the top lane. He does get to flash out a Riven, but she is level 6. I don't know if they want to continue doing, but yes, they do. And there's a couple autos. That's a kill going over to Riven, and you hate to see it. That is another kill in a gank situation. That's where you need to know what your objective is. Your objective is to break the freeze, not get a kill. And they were unable to do so, and they give the kill over to Riven. Ah, that was so unfortunate. It seemed like Mundo was on the very edge of the range of that ult there. So quite unfortunate that he was able to get uh, taken out by the Riven ult. And here comes Yasuo up doing some trades with uh, Wukong again. He's got a pretty considerable wave. Let's see what he does with it. Yeah, he has a wave mid, but Wukong just looking too strong. He has his tabbies early. Those are going to do work against Yasuo. Um, once the armor com be comes in for both teams, they're going to start getting tanky. And there's an early dragon going over to Warwick. SVU down two kills early see if they're able to make this up, if Zach's able to get involved. Yeah, everything in the bot lane seems pretty standard, pretty normal. Looks like Pleasant Plant might try to contest it. Yeah, he is, and he's going in on this Warwick here. Warwick's very squishy and right now. here comes Alistair with the rotate, and there's the Yasuo ult, and there's a kill going over to Yasuo. That's a huge kill out on the side of SVU, and you love to see that. They're getting back in the game, and that that's what they needed to get some morale. Yeah, and credit to three members there for SVU, so they were able to get some assist gold there as well as the kill. Yeah, but with no ult in mid lane, Yasuo, not sure if he's going to be able to win this. A level 7 Wukong. Zach is in the chickens. He might eat for chickens. I've never seen a pretty, pretty crazy tactic there. Let's see if mid without the Yasuo ult, though, it's very risky. Exactly. And Wukong with this clone, you never really know who you're going on there. So we'll see if Zach can make an engage here and then uh, turn this mid lane. Oh, here he goes. Here he goes. Yeah, he jumped over the wall. They went in, but they were unable to get the kill. That's Wukong living with one HP and 5677 got the ignite off, but unable to get the kill. Let's see if he's able to do it. It looks like he's pushing mid, fighting bot lane as well. Swammer goes down to, to Yosiki. Yosenki. And this is a double kill possibility for Yosenki. A failed flash by Honey T-Bone, and things are falling apart here for SVU. That's a double kill over to him, and across the board, they are taking everything. Yeah, Honey T-Bone definitely overextending there just a little bit. Uh, Lucian seemed like he could get a full ult out there, even though he got exhausted and did not want to back out of his ult. So it's interesting that he decided to stay there. Uh, maybe he probably should have backed out. I don't, I'm not really sure, but, uh, you know, Honey T-Bone get a little bit overextended there and then uh, given Swanee the, the double kill there. That was a little bit unnecessary. Yeah, it's aggression coming out from SVU in the bot lane. They just didn't have it calculated the way they thought. Um, Flash is still up on both AD carries, so it's just unfortunate fight. Saw the uh, other kill going over. So that's four kills to one here in the side of Swanee, but only a 1, 1,500 gold lead here. Not insurmountable by any means. The farm is still going decent. Uh, just like last game, we have a farm advantage for Swanee in the top lane, but a farm advantage for SVU in the mid lane. Um, so we'll have to see how Zach can impact this. We'll have to see what the next Yasuo ult brings. Yeah, unfortunately, the farm advantage in the top lane for Suwannee is quite significant, whereas the farm advantage for SVU in the mid lane is not as drastic. So we'll see if SVU can and really help out with this uh, Riven up here, because this Riven seems like he's given a, Mundo a bunch of problems with the freezing of the lanes. Yeah, we'll have to see if um, they're able to push this in. Willy Wonka falling behind in farm. He is keeping decently up in levels. He is which is great, but uh, he is able to at least stay close by. Warwick going onto the Rift Herald here, an invade coming into the south jungle here by Swanee. Aya and Brahm looking to invade, got some deep vision out. Zach is, those are Zach angles. You know, those wards are very good against Zach. He loves to jump over walls from super far away. So if you can get those deep vision out, you can really cut off his gank pass. Yeah, uh, Alistar was able to rotate up mid, but then wasn't able to capitalize on it. So I don't think Zach even knew that Rift Herald was taken that entire time. The SVU didn't have any vision on that at all. Uh, Zach was going to the mid lane to try to get a gank out. And it just didn't seem like anybody even knew that Warwick was taking this Rift Herald. So it looks like Warwick is kind of abusing this jungle in terms of overall objective control. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely taking advantage of the early game. His lanes are doing well on their own. He doesn't need to gank. He can kind of roam around and do what he wants. Um, they're trying to get that deep vision. They're trying to fight that pink ward off, but SVU doing a good job defending it. Uh, kind of stalling out here. 5677 needs to be careful, and here's the ult out of the Wukong. 5677 getting flashed on by the Wukong, and that's another kill going over to Wukong. That Wukong is getting tanky. He's dealing with this Yasuo. 
quite well. Yasuo is squishy at this point in the game, and he really needs to get his items. And here comes the Herald mid. That's going to be a huge gold swing for Swanee. Yeah, but here we go. We have the bot lane pushing. That was interesting, though, that Yasuo decided to go back in. I'm not really sure if that was an intentional tactic, maybe a mouse slip or something like that. Uh, maybe he just knew that he was dead from the get-go. Here comes Zach trying to defend this mid-tower, able to kill the Rift Herald, able to get a smite down on the and Wukong. Here's a, here's a roam by Mundo. There is a TP on Riven if she elects to use it. Like they're trying to get in there. There's the clone. Zach using his flash, but not going to be able to get anything. He has his Bloblets, but that's a wasted flash there by Zach. Um, and a bot lane from Swanee swinging up. They're going to try to collapse on him. Is he able to get out? He does get over that wall. That could be huge. Looks like Zach will survive. And we'll see if uh, see if anything else comes of this. Yeah, Muno's still trying there's to the bot lane fight. The there's the going by Alistair oh. onto the Zaya. Zach still has his plans, but there's the ult from Warwick onto the Lucian. He's unable to get out. Pleasant plant going back in on the Alistair, but they are out of damage. Honey T Bone trying to survive. He has his ult, but he can't do anything. There is no damage. Here's a late TP coming out from Window and the counter TP from Riven. This is turning into a 5v5. 5677 gets there. He has his wind wall. He throws it the wrong direction. Are they able to do anything? There's the ult coming out from him onto the shutdown. There's the shutdown on Zaya. This fight is turning into a madhouse. Five Six, seven, seven. Can he do anything? No, and that's going to be a clean ace going over to the side of Sawani. They're up 10 to 2 in kills right here, and SVU just falling apart at the seams. And just as SVU was able to get a 4-for-1 four, four ace, or uh, an ace for one one kill in last game, here comes Swanee getting an, a full-on ace for just one person there, and it was, seemed interesting. 5677 wanted to go for that engage with the TP, and he was chasing the Braum the entire time. I mean, Warwick is sitting there with no health. He doesn't want to turn on him. doesn't want to turn on anybody right in front of him. They were just chasing for this Braum. For, for, they're just trying to go for kills there, and it just seemed like maybe that's where that team fight went wrong. Yeah, and SVU is in a situation where they are down a lot of gold now. They need to just be patient and wait for their items. They have no items here. They have one Mythic on the hands of Lucian, um, and that's going to do well, but they need to be patient. They need to wait for their armor to come out. They Wait for their, their mythics on their Yasuo, the mythics on Zack, Mundo. Then they can really look to fight these team fights. At this point in the game, they're just too far behind to be able to contest any of these objectives. Um, and we'll see how they navigate this mid game. Here comes Warwick coming in on 5677. He's going to go down here. No way he survives. He does use the flash, but Riven is pursuing. He has no backup coming. There's the counter flash out of Riven, and that's a kill going over to Swanee. That is two deaths or four deaths on the side of Yasuo, and he's unable to survive in mid lane. Right, and Yasuo is definitely overextended there. They don't have a mid turret. SVU is trying to farm up, but they got to understand that you can't push up whenever you don't have a mid turret like that. Although your top and bot lanes have five plates each, you still do not have a mid lane turret. You cannot push up that high, even if you are desperate enough to get that farm. Yeah, and now Willy Wonka is in a 1v2 situation, but they are ganking this Riven. She did use her flash in the last fight, and this should be a kill. Hopefully it goes to the Lucian, and yes, it does. There's a shutdown on the Lucian. That could be huge. So Riven not respecting that she's weak side in mid lane. Wukong is getting a free push in bot side. That's a good kill for SVU. They are still down 5k gold, though. And just as Yasuo, just as SVU's Yasuo was caught out, Swanee's Riven gets caught out in the mid lane just exactly the same way. I mean, it was like we watched an instant replay. But here comes Swanee rotating down into the mid lane here. SVU maybe yeah, a little bit overextended. Oh. Warwick, that's a good kill. Do they have anything left to fight the Zaya Brahm? I'm not sure. Lucian giving him all the bullets he's got, but not enough damage. Wukong's still in the bot side. This is a 3v2 for the side of SVU. I don't know if they're able to get any kills here. They do have an item advantage. Lucian still has his Mythic here. There goes Honey T-Bone. He's going in. He's flashing in. That's a great engage by Honey T-Bone. Can Swimmer do anything? Can he finish off the Zaya? He's just too far away. Wukong is swinging up, and it looks like he's going to be able to get him if, if Swimmer's not smart. And there's the ult out of the Wukong. Swammer might be going down to this. I don't know if he has any options here. And yes, he does go down. Wukong is able to rotate faster than Yasuo, and he cleans up this fight. That is a huge rotate out of the mid laner from Swanee. Seems like SVU was just getting desperate there. You had Lucian trying to chase that Zaya down instead of just securing that kill on the Braum. There's a bunch of options that SVU's having here, and they're not taking them. They're taking the more risky options. They're taking the options that seem like that seem like better plays on paper, but uh, are not as effective just because they're chasing. They're chasing way too much on these fights, and they really got to slow things down, take what's in front of them. They took that Warwick engage, and were able to get that 3v1 versus Warwick and get that easy kill, and now they're kind of in in this weird situation where they need to be farming they need to get some easy picks but they're they're really overextending way too much here yeah they really are and uh this snowball is out of control on the side of swanee um we'll have to see if they're able to you know stem the bleeding here and get into a uh, game 
uh, just reset their mental here. You know, they need to get some engages out. They need to get to Alistair, the Zac, with the Asua ults and see what they can do. Because right now they are really far behind. Um, and we're seeing these picks coming out with the Wukong and just they're unable to handle it. Absolutely. And Sawani is doing an excellent job of sticking together. They're making sure that they're rotating together. They're making sure that nobody's ever really getting uh, caught out too much. And if they are, it's the Wukong, Wukong in this bot lane, who is an absolute powerhouse at 4-0 with uh, some three items already. Yeah, and uh, we have the Zaya has all the kills, the Wukong has all the kills, and as we highlighted earlier, those are their carries, and you love to have your kills on your carries. Um, we'll have to see if they get greedy and give those shutdowns over. That's the only real way SVU is going to have to get back in this. Here goes Zaki, is looking for an engage here. I don't know if this is the best fight. Um, Yasuo and Wukong are on the sideline, so they will not be joining. Uh, we have Dragon coming up. This is third Dragon or Swanee if they're able to collect it. I don't know if SVU is going to be able to contest it. Yeah, I think uh, SVU had an opportunity there to contest that Rift Herald. They didn't really take it. They weren't really interested in it either. Uh, Zach tried to go for an engage, and then immediately SVU realized that they were outclassed, outmatched, and they backed off uh, comfortably as well. So here comes Dragon. Dragon's coming up here. Um, Swanee's got two people in the top lane as well. They're jungled. They're throwing a Rift lane up in the top lane. What, what's SVU going to do to defend this? Yeah, they need to send multiple members up here. We have four going up to the top side of Swanee with the Rift Herald. This could be a huge push if SVU doesn't look like they even want to respond. Looks like they're going to try to trade the dragon, but I don't think that's going to be worth. They're going to get one, two, maybe three towers here, and they have to start channeling recalls. They have to get back to the base. They have to be able to defend that in-hip turret because this Rift Herald will do work. This is an early push here from Swanee. They have four strong. Here comes the backs, but Wukong's canceling them. He's canceling all the backs. Now Lucian has to back. Can Lucian get back? Wukong's 1v3-ing right now, and he gets a kill. What more can he do? Willy Wonka trying to hold them off 1v4. They can't kill this Wukong. The damage is dead with Yasuo gone. And Wukong is trying to stall. And not only is he stalling, but he's killing. Zack's coming back up with the Blobbles, but the Dragons. And they're killing all of them up on the top side with the Rift Herald. And this could just be the end right here, Cam. I don't know if SVU has an answer to this. Lucian trying to hold them off. And this is going to be a cheeky win here out of the side of Swanee. They had that Rift Herald push. They weren't able to defend it. And that is game two going over to the side of Swanee. We do apologize for the freeze. We're having a few technical difficulties while we figure this out. Uh, yeah, Kevin, I mean, you said it, man. Swanee had such a good push there with that Rift Herald there. And they uh, and SVU, they needed to back. It seemed like Yasuo started his back, but then he canceled it at some point. Lucian was just farming mid. Nobody seemed like they were at risk of losing their entire base here. And Swanee took advantage of that. Yeah, you got to watch out for those pushes with the Rift Herald. And this is the style. Swanee, they switch to the Bruiser mid. And SVU, you know, they have, yeah, this is a best of three. So SVU did have this game two. They try to go for a comp like this. Didn't quite work out, but they're still at game three. Um, for all those you tuning in, though, unfortunately, we will not be playing game three today. There is some scheduling conflicts, and the team, both teams were prepared for this. We'll be doing game three at a later date, um, possibly over the weekend or possibly on Monday or Tuesday. So we will try to keep you in the loop for that um, because I know all of you are, are on the edge of your seats for this game three and the conclusion of this series. Uh, we just don't have time for it tonight. Right, Kevin. A very one-sided victory for SVU, followed by a one-sided victory by Sawani. So... They got plenty of time. They got a couple days to figure this out. They're going to figure out when they can schedule, reschedule this game. And then in the meantime, uh, both teams are going to sit down and be like, okay, well, how do we how do we wrap this up? How do we win? How do we secure this victory for our school? Exactly. Um, you know, because once the, the laning phase really just told the story of this game, too, Wukong just dominating mid lane. Zaya got those kills on the bot lane of SVU, and then they just kind of rolled over everything else. The Ganked topside by Zach, resulting in Mundo's death was horrible. And then the, the CS advantage was just in favor of uh, topside. So they lost every lane, and then they just weren't ready for this Rift Herald push, so they couldn't really come back in this game. And uh, before they knew it, the game was over. Absolutely. And just a touch on that second game as well. The fact that Wukong was able to rotate up and basically 1v3 SVU while they were at drag uh, was pretty convincing i mean he didn't get this kill on zach but to be able to kill uh pretty much everybody on the map it just it's like svu didn't really have much of a response at all so uh the wukong was incredibly powerful the zaya was incredibly strong and uh you know sawani kind of took the brahm and really took advantage of that uh out of svu's hands by first picking the brahm there 
Yeah, so we'll have to see how that Game 3 goes. This is going to be an exciting Game 3. We will let you guys know when that is happening so we can stream it to you. Um, otherwise, we will be having another stream Tuesday at 7. Um, stream that game for you guys as well. So make sure you tune into that. And also, Rocket League is going to be streaming on Monday at 7. Um, so make sure you're, you're here for that as well. Right. That's going to be it for everybody here at Southern Virginia University. My name is Cameron Tonker Castle, joined with uh, Kevin Zuko Lamb, and we will see you guys later.